Hi guys, I'm here with Ali and Lucy, uh, two of the creators behind Extraversal from Big Punch Studios. Enter the Extraverse, that's the space between worlds in this anthology combining four stories of separate universes. In the pages of Cuckoos, the crew of the Reflector sets sail in search of trade, adventure and perhaps a home. In Orb, a giant stone warship appears above the skies of an alternate New York, casting Utopia into chaos and leaving the fate of the world in the hands of a young girl and a superhuman prophet. 99 Sword is set years ago, a legendary swordsmith forged 99 swords of great power. Elsie joins some sword hunters seeking to unite them and claim the ultimate prize. In the Wall, high above the city of Prism, Siam and her skilled team of catchers defend their home from showers of deadly crystals, ever wondering what lies beyond the Wall that separates them from the outside world. Oh, and there's even a cameo from Cat and Morang. Uh, so what can you tell me about the genre of this comic? Uh, it is action, adventure, sci-fi, fantasy, alternate history, um, massive jumping over buildingsness. I'm not quite sure what that one comes under. <laughs> Super, Possibly, superpowers. Yeah, yeah, superpowers. Uh, and Interdimensional, intra extraversal, Great. weirdness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of, all Are there any ones. genres you haven't covered? We don't have a horror comic in there yet. That's true. Erotica? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that would really fit with it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so this is kind of an all-ages, action-adventure, spacey type thing. Yep, um, and it's an anthology approach? It is. Um, originally it was released as a quarterly magazine, short stories, all kind of happening in the same multiverse. Okay. But it's one story from lots of different points of views. These various points of views don't know about the other points of views that are happening. Right. But they all start kind of interweaving. Certain characters will appear in multiple comics with not much explanation. Okay. And as time goes on, those interweavings get more and more obvious and more and more intricate. Okay, that's a really cool approach, actually, because it means people can dip in and out of things and get an yeah. idea of the overall world. Is there kind of an overarching idea to bring them all together at the end? Or? Well, yeah. So or is that a spoiler? Well, I'll try and avoid spoilers. So this is year one of the magazine. Okay. So this was originally released in 2015, I believe. So uh, the four issues that were out in 2015, this now collects those. We're obviously now currently in year four, so right. things have happened. And yeah. this year is quite a big one for us. All I'm going to say is Infinity War came out this year. Okay. And, you know, you may see some, some similar themes. We don't see why Marvel should have all the fun, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, <laughs> big epic crossovers are not confined just to the big two. No, of course. And they're a staple of the comic book world as well. I mean, everyone that reads comic books knows that well, every now and again there's going to be a huge, giant, epic crossover. And you guys have got a bit of a history of that. This is very much like the logical progression of yeah. what happened between Afterlife Inc. and Seven String. Yes, it is. that was the one, yeah. That, that kind of created a multiverse. And as we've said before, we made the error of leaving it in canon, uh, not giving yeah. ourselves a reset button. So <laughs> that means that there is a multiverse and it contains all of the characters from Extraversal plus the characters from Afterlife Inc, plus the characters from Seven String, plus the characters from Catamarang. Yeah, of course. I am interested to see how Catamarang managed to fit into Extraversal, I have to say. What's it like sort of doing all the drawing, colouring and stuff for something that's got all these different universes? It's amazing, it's so much fun. Um, I currently colour cookies, um, so doing the colours on that, it's something that, because I'm not an artist or a writer, it's a great way for me to get involved and I do all the layouts and stuff. Yeah. Um, but we really work well as a team, like we all have skills that complement one another and it's just a really satisfying feeling that we all work together for three months really yeah. hard and at the end we have this magazine to show for it and then at the end of that we have like a graphic novel that yeah. it Which just feels looks so stunning. Good. Yeah, it feels so good in our hands, like it's really thick and oh, we're just so pleased with it. Yeah, because yeah, you guys have been writing comics for quite a while now? Yes, yeah. Um, I kind of got started after meeting John because he was already kind of into the whole comic scene. Um, and then I started taking on a bit of sort of editing and lettering duty. So I put all the speech bubbles on that means you can actually follow the story because let's face it, artists sometimes get a bit carried away and there'll be, <laughs> there'll be you know, all these very exciting things going on the page, but goodness knows what's actually meant to be happening. Um, and so now I actually write 99 Swords in, yeah. in Extraversal. Um, that's kind of my baby now. And I do a lot of the editing for other smaller parts of it that we're doing like this year we have a photo comic that Ali and I have done together okay, um, awesome. which is about bits of the comic falling into the real world um, I see there's, there's a bit of a thing going on with fourth wall breaking with you guys I have to there, say there is no fourth wall the, the more times <laughs> I interview the guys from this studio the more they kind of go uh, but then they realize they're in a comic uh, but then they break the fourth wall then they start climbing out the panels <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah yeah panels are just guidelines really yeah, I think that's probably a good way to approach life, really, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no fourth wall because we've destroyed it. Yeah. 
They've completely bulldozed it. Yeah. A fifth wall in a fifth dimension. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how many more volumes do you plan to do of this? Is there any kind of set amount? Uh, not hugely at the moment. It has kind of an end game, but we're not quite sure when that's going to appear just yet. Yeah. Um, the current year is our big crossover event. It's called Perfect Storm. That will be volume four okay. of this. We already have plans for volume five, like which will be next year's comic, and then yeah. it will be releases a graphic novel in three or four years time when we get around to doing that um, so yeah we do, there is there is a final event of the whole thing but we don't quite know when it's going to show up yet ah, so more is coming if you enjoy the what they've done of this so far uh, where's a good place for people to find out more information about the comics you guys make so we have our website so if you just google big punch studios that's us uh, everything's on our website we've got a store we've got information about each story um, so yeah yeah, and obviously you can get hold of their stuff at loads of the major Comic Cons in the UK as well and get them to sign it and meet everyone because they have a stall here with everybody on it and all their different awesome comics. Well, thank you for letting me have a read of it. It looks absolutely stunning. I love seeing what you guys come up with. So, yeah, get hold of this if you can, guys. It's a really good fun read and we'll see you next time. Bye.